happy onam everybody today i'm going to be narrating the story of onam how it came to be celebrated as given in the text of Mah- uh, shrimad bhagavat purana so what happens is um, mahabali chakravarti was a very kind king he was a very nice person but he got defeated by indra initially shukacharya who was the acharya of the asuras revived him and he gave him so many blessings that he became all powerful now with the blessings of his acharya and the other sages with him he went back to in indra loka or the deva loka and he won over devatas now indra and all the other devatas ran to their guru brahaspati or jupiter and asked him what is it that we can do now so then brahaspati tells don't go in war with him don't go to war with him just uh, he is very very powerful because of the blessings of his acharya but there will be a time when his acharya will curse him just wait for that pray, pray to lord narayana and everything will fall in place as of now just run and hide this is what his guru advises him so as per the advice of his guru he goes in hiding with all the other devdas and very comfortably mahabali wins over the heavens now he is the king of the heavens and the earth when this is the case indra's mother aditi feels very worried about indra saying that my son was in such a good position he's lost all his wealth he's lost his position and now he's in hiding i don't know what he eats how comfortable he is what he does like a typical mother aditi is now worried kashyapa the father of both uh, the devata devas and the asuras comes home after a long penance he sees aditi and he asks her what is it that's bothering you my dear have you not fed the guests who come home properly did you offer them water i mean a house that does not offer even water to the guests who come home is a fox hole have you gone into some such mess what what did you do wrong why is your face so worried or are you worried about our sons what is what is bothering you so much i can see so much of uh, anxiety on your face so then aditi says uh, dear the problem is mahabali has become all powerful and he's taken over the heavens now our son and all the other devatas as in all the devatas are their sons so indra and the other devatas have now fled and they are in hiding and i don't know how to help them so i don't know what kind of ritual i should do what kind of vrata i should do what should i do in order to help them i'm so worried about them so now kashyapa rishi tells them sure what i can suggest is go and do what is called as payo vrata payo vrata is a 12 day vrata which is done in the month of falguni which is around april and uh, in the when the moon is growing so in the growth phase of the moon do this vrata for about 12 days where you consume only milk but you make an offering of milk with sugar and rice to lord vishnu only thing that should be there in your mind is lord vishnu you should pray to him very sincerely take a bath very early in the morning apply some sand on your body uh, and then go to the river take a bath and continue doing this vrata as you do it offer that paisa or the sweet that you just prepared for lord vishnu to all the or to 12 uh, sages to 12 very um, pious people and then take a partake of only milk do this for 12 days and on the 13th day feed everybody around uh feed all the sages give them all uh, gifts that you can afford to give and uh give them the dakshina as they call and then um uh, if you see anyone blind or you know someone who is handicapped or someone who's needy poor give them all the things that you can give as if you would treat mahavishnu and then take partake of food with your relatives if you do this mahavishnu will definitely come and he will uh answer your uh, wishes he will bless you with all that you want he says this and uh, aditi starts her vrata now after this when uh, this vrata is going on uh, she goes through the penance uh, she also recites om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 108 times per day and she goes through this vrata uh, 
and at the end of it lord vishnu appears before her he appears with the yellow color dhoti that he wears he has four hands he has the shankam and the chakram and the gada and the lotus in his hand he is wearing a beautiful uh, kaustaba he is wearing a beautiful mala his uh, skin is in the color of uh, the rain clouds he is so mesmerizing to look at he is i mean seeing lord narayana what would one feel she is not able to think of what she wanted to ask she says she just falls at his feet she is overwhelmed she's got tears in her eyes and she doesn't even know to say uh, a prayer to him she doesn't know how to address him she is all in awe she is all in um, a state which cannot be described so easily because she's seen god now when he uh, when she's in that state uh, god starts saying that i know your worries i know that you're worried about your son indra and that mahabali is taken over the heavens don't worry i'll restore everything for you in uh, i'll be born very soon to you go and uh, you know be with kashyapa maharishi i will go inside him and then i'll be born to you and uh, what will happen is you uh, i will go and i'll restore the kingdom when i'm born to you as a son i'll go and restore the kingdom now she is in double joy one she's going to restore the kingdom for her son and second lord vishnu is going to be born as her son so it is a double joy she doesn't know how to express it but lord vishnu has told this is a secret just between you and me do not tell it to anybody for kashyapa maharishi who is sitting there in penance who is in that samadhi state this is no secret to him because he knows lord vishnu has entered inside him he could feel him and he knows that he is going to be born of him as a son so kashyapa maharishi turns to aditi and they eventually they have a son the day they have a son is this month which is called the chingam month on the tirvona nakshatram or the shravana nakshatram so shravana nakshatram is uh, what is celebrated for uh, lord balaji as well and also for uh, vamana avatara just like how uh, punarvasu is celebrated for lord rama or rohini nakshatram is celebrated for lord krishna here shravana nakshatram or the tirvona nakshatram is celebrated for vamana avatara because on that particular day lord was born as a small boy he was not born as a baby he was born as a boy he had all his four hands and he was uh, born as lord himself and then he changed his uh, appearance to be a small boy and he was ready for what is called as the janevu function this janevu function is called upanayanam uh this small boy who is uh, who's who's uh, who looks like a dwarf who actually looks like a dwarf um is lord narayana and for him uh, the same upanayanam uh, function has to be done that thread ceremony has to be done and for that thread ceremony brahma comes and he puts a thread for him the savitra devata comes and uh, gives the upadesha of gayatri mantra what normally happens in our families is the eldest person or the most knowledgeable person or the parents uh the father gives the, does the upanayanam function and the uh, and he is the one who gives this brahma upadesha which is nothing but the reciting of the gayatri mantra so normally gayatri mantra is not told out loudly it is not uh to be put on speakers or anything it is a mantra which is to be to be kept as a secret which is why it is uh you know done as an upadesha during this particular ceremony now after this <clears throat> uh lord uh, this a uh, lord of the sky he comes and gives an umbrella to him the lord of the forest comes and gives him a dandam dandam or a stick he gives him a stick and then uh brahma gives him a kamandalu as a gift uh a small grass uh, uh thread is woven and it is uh, tied a around the waist of the uh, child so that is called maunji now this maunji is given by uh, the father kashyapa the mother gives a cloth a, a loin cloth basically like a, a, a cloth only to cover the essentials so she gives that and then um, 
the earth the devata of the earth mother uh, goddess uh, bhumi devi she gives a, a deer skin a black deer skin as a gift to lord uh, vamana and then kubera gives a vessel a begging vessel to uh, lord vamana because what happens is after this uh, this uh, janevu function this boy who is a brahmachari he goes with the begging vessel and he asks for bhiksha he says bhavati bhiksham dehi so he goes and he takes this bhiksha and when he takes the bhiksha the first bhiksha is given by the mother and after that he goes into the when he goes into the patishala normally other uh, mothers take care of the child so here the first bhiksha is given to him by uh goddess parvati by shakti so such is this uh, function such is this up upanayanam function and after the upanayanam function he goes into doing his job so he was just born his upanayanam happened and now he goes to meet mahabali chakravarti mahabali chakravarti in the meanwhile is doing what is called as a ashwamedha yaga ashwamedha yagam is basically a horse sacrifice but here he is doing 100 years ashwamedha yagam as per the advice of his uh, guru shukracharya now about mahabali chakravarti he was a very kind hearted uh, king he took care of his uh, subjects very nicely he was very very um, obedient to his guru very respectful to the elders and he is the grandson of prahlada so we know how much lord vishnu loves prahlada now imagine his grandson he is go is going to you know go through something so uh, why did lord vishnu have to come and do this we will understand this in a little bit now so this little boy vamana he walks into the yaga yagna shala of mahabali as soon as he comes he is so radiant he is so full of um, you know though he is such a small boy he looks like someone who knows everything on earth he is he is all learned and he is uh, you know glowing he is glowing he is so radiant that sometimes they feel the sun has descended on earth when they see him coming from a distance and uh, as he walks nearby unknowingly without a you know a purpose without a, a thinking all the sages and others who were doing the yagna stand up in reverence they don't intend to do it but they are not able to control themselves that is the kind of effect that uh, this little vamana is having so mahabali sees all that he sees everybody is being reverential to him and nobody can contain their awe to this little boy who comes with a uh, an umbrella and you know uh, he is carrying a small tirtha patra tirtha patra is a water vessel so he is carrying all this and he is coming into the yagna shala so mahabali also goes there he washes his feet and as is customary he takes that water and he pours it on his head water to drink to wash his hands also and then he uh, with folded hands he comes and asks uh, you seem to be very learned though you are very young tell me uh, O oh, learned one, what is it that I can give you? I'm sure you've come here because whenever there was yagnas that happened, uh, the learned ones would come there and they were given gifts generously. That was a part of very much a part of a yagna. So uh, no yagna would be complete without uh, this kind of a uh, what do you call it, ritual. So in fact, when here Mahabali is saying, please tell me what is it that I can do for you? What is it that I can give you? Should I find a girl to get mar uh, get her married to you? Should I give you an entire continent? Should I give you so much of riches? Should I give you so much so many cows? Should I uh, should I give you gold? What is it that I can give you? So this boy smiles and he says, uh, No, I just need a uh, three feet of land and the two on my feet. So he says. did you even look at your feet they are so small they are so small they are so tiny how can i give you 3 feet of land with yours that is like not giving you anything if i give you something then your entire life you shouldn't have to ask anybody for anything that is how i would like to give you please ask me for more please allow me to give you more uh, so he says when there is nothing which will satisfy a man it is always that you know no matter how much you have you will always want more so when you keep doing that if you have more than what you need then there is always this greed that you want a little more and a little more and a little more so if that when that is the case 
there'll yeah. never be satisfaction and it will hinder my spiritual progress therefore don't don't tell me that you'll give me more give me what i need shukracharya was seeing all this and then he understood that this is lord narayana who's come in disguise in order to defeat mahabali so he calls mahabali uh, so uh, before that mahabali promises that i will give you whatever you've asked for i'll give you the three feet of land because you seem to be very uh, fixated on just getting those three feet of land i'll give it to you but uh, and uh, then shukracharya calls him aside and he tells him uh, i think this is lord narayana in disguise he's come to fool you he's come to take away all the riches from you you will become a pauper if you give it to him he says so be it see the purpose of having a yagna is the yagna purusha should come here if lord narayana has come he is the yagna purusha he is come here and he, if he is asking for something then if i don't give that then what is the purpose in doing any yagna so i would gladly give whatever he asks for and moreover i have given my word and i will not go back on my word i will not falsify my word so then ma shukracharya tries to reason out with him saying what is the point in giving so much that you will become a pauper <clears throat> the purpose of giving is so that you have enough to uh, you know live and you will live a comfortably comfortable life that giving will become punya and it will become more comfortable for your life now if your giving has become a uh, you know bane instead of a boon what is the purpose in doing it so mahabali is not deterred by any of uh, shukracharya's word he is very very fixed on giving he says if it is lord narayana or if it is someone else just a small boy a learned man whoever it is i am if i've said i'm giving i'm giving there is no going back on this and when he says that and he takes and his wife uh, brings the teertha patra or the water vessel so how it was given was water was poured and said that i'm giving you this that is how it was given so when the wife took uh, brought the teertha patra and he was willing and he was about to give ma shukracharya gets very upset with him saying you are not obeying me you're going against my word until you obeyed me everything was fine but now that you're not obeying me let me warn you that you will become a pauper and he actually uh, curses him so despite the curse and everything he still goes ahead and he gives uh, his danam very happily he gives it very happily to lord vishnu knowing that it is lord vishnu now also and knowing that he's going to become a pauper now the people the asuras the other asuras who are witnessing this they're getting very angry and they say oh you have come here to fool my uh king so let me come in uh, you know uh, bash you up and they come running but can they even approach uh, lord vishnu garuda and the others come and protect lord vishnu uh, making sure that they don't even come near and mahabali stops them all saying don't be stupid nobody can actually fight lord vishnu uh, you all have to accept that he is come here which means there is something which is great which is happened here which is why lord vishnu comes he does not just come like that so be happy and they all leave him they all abandon lord mahabali and they go to this place called rasatala so now his relatives have abandoned him uh, his uh, guru has actually cursed him and he's lost all the uh, you know uh, he knows that he's going to lose all his riches so now little vamana who was a dwarf now is growing into trivikrama trivikrama is a huge form unimaginably huge form where the lord uh, me- grows enough to lo- to measure the entire earth in just one foot so he grows uh, tall enough to measure the earth in one foot uh, there mahabali is standing seeing all the asuras and the devas and the humans and the animals and the birds and uh, uh, the sun and the moon everything inside uh the lord's form as trivikrama now with one foot he is measured the earth the second foot he rises and he uh measures uh the skies when he is measuring the heavens which also belongs to mahabali he his leg goes beyond the heavens and it reaches satyaloka satyaloka is where brahma is sitting so brahma is so happy that lord has come into his house and he uh, takes the water and he pours it on his feet as an abhisheka and he uh, does archana with flowers now that water which was poured on lord's feet in in satyaloka is what comes to us as 
uh, Ganga. Now, after that, the Lord asked, now where do I put my feet? Where, do, where is my third foot? Where do I place my third foot? One on the earth, second belongs to you, again the heavens, so I've put it there. And now I, I need a place for the third foot. Are you going to falsify your promise? You said you would give me three feet. Now I've just got two feet, I need one more. What are you going to do? So then Mahabali bows down and he actually, uh, he prostrates to Lord saying, put it on my head please. Before this, he is also bound by the Varunastra, where, uh, by Varuna, where he becomes a bond. So now he is, uh, uh, Lord, uh, Lord puts his head on his feet and he takes Mahabali uh, into, I mean, imagine Lord, he says, okay, you're mine. So imagine uh, Lord Vishnu saying that you're mine and he takes him also. Now Prahlada runs uh, to, to Lord Vishnu and he prostrates before him and he says, uh, Hey Narayana, who has always been merciful to all of us. So, uh, I mean, you've taken my, you've tested my grandson, you've taken all the riches, you've taken all the uh, belongings and everything, which is all great because he, he was also pride. He was swelling with pride that everything belongs to him. So nobody learns a real lesson when they are uh, when uh, their life is very cushy. So I'm very happy that you have taught him a lesson. But does he deserve this punishment where he is bound by this Varuna and and he is standing helpless? Can you not help him out? So Narayana releases him and he says, uh, "I was actually testing him." So a person uh, who is um, you know uh, ba who has so much of riches and and then who is confused by his uh, own guru saying that you know don't give him everything you will be a pauper don't uh, go by your promise falsify your word and you know gives all kinds of advices does not is not deterred by it is a person who is worthy of being um, I mean, he is much more than uh, Indra. And he is much more than everybody else. So, uh, Mahabali, you go to Rasatala. You go and live there with your family. There, there is no, no concept of sorrow. There is no concept of disease. There is no concept of, you know, greed. There, everything is very peaceful in Rasatala. I will come there personally and be there with you. I will guard you. If someone comes there to defeat you, if someone gets greedy to think that they want to come there because the devas also want to live in Rasatala, it is better than the heavens. So if they, if they want to come there, nobody can come beyond me because I am going to stand guard for you with a maze in my hand or the gada in my hand. So saying that, Mahavishnu uh, asked Prahlada also to leave for Rasatala. Now this is the story of Mahabali. He then completes the yajna by, uh, you know, uh, by becoming the owner of the yajna and uh, Vamana finishes the uh, entire, <clears throat> entire ritual. So the Ashwamedha yajna is also completed. Now after this, uh, so now Mahabali wants to uh, really love, loves his people, right? He wants to see how we are and everything. But this uh, entire earth he's given to Lord Vishnu. Now, how will he come and see how his people are? He will really miss them. So he asked Narayana, what do I do about that? So Parashurama takes his axe and he reclaims a portion of the land, which is now the Kerala. It's, it starts from uh, Gokarna and uh, you know extends down so that is the portion of land which has been reclaimed from the seas and he says this is a part of land that you have not given to me because it has just now been reclaimed by Parashurama so that piece of land is where you will come and visit uh, every year once every year to see how your people are you can do your rituals when you come there too so uh, Mahabali is very happy so that day when uh, Narayana was born uh, in the Chingam Nakshatram, as it is called in uh, Malayalam, uh, which falls between August and September, on the Tiruvonam Nakshatram, or uh, the Tiruvonam is the Nakshatram in uh, the star in which Lord was born. So on that day, Mahabali comes every year to see how his people are doing. Are they happy? Are they living together as a family? Are they enjoying lives? Is the life prosperous? So, in order to please the king in Kerala, what they do is, they do what is called as the Pukolam. Pukolam is nothing but our rangoli made with petals of flowers. So, uh, traditionally there were 10 different flowers which were used, but today all kinds of flowers are being used. People wear new dresses, 
they get together as families no matter where they are they get together as families and they have a a lavish lunch so this entire festival is pre- is celebrated for 9 days but today the tiruvonam nakshatram is the most important day which is when mahabali comes visiting people so uh, it is believed that he comes to every house to see how people are enjoying it are people actually sitting together having fun as a family eating together so this eating is a very important part of all our rituals as you know all our functions as you know and uh, so here it is called onam sadhya where food is served on a banana leaf there are uh, i think a uh, 9 to 13 course meal which is uh, which is served and uh, it's uh, uh, you know uh, the idea is that mahabali will also king mahabali will also come and par- partake of this food with us um and uh, the next uh, and then there are there are boat races to say that we are your men we are very strong we are capable there are snake boat races which happen um which is a huge festival there boat festival is huge and then there are uh, processions of elephants which happen uh, men and women are da- uh, are all decked up there are different uh, Uh, art forms in the sense there is chendamelam there are, chendamelam is a is very unique uh, it to kerala it is played over there uh, these are drum beats that happen and then there are dances like uh, there are very um, what do you call unique dances which are done as a dance drama as you know dancing to say uh, this is onam and things so it's a very festive thing in kerala um, i hope i have covered everything happy onam to you all